Well, hello, and thank you for joining me for another ITY video with top international executives. Today I have with me Sergei Belosov. He is the CEO and co-founder of data storage company Acronis. Welcome to the program. Yeah, you're welcome, thank you. Now, we last spoke uh, late last year and uh, you were uh, happily answering some of my questions about your, your past and, uh, and that video is available for people to watch online. I did a complete transcript. But I was watching you just recently, I think only in the last uh, couple of weeks, talking to the uh, Singaporean... It was uh, last week. Last week, yeah, talking to about to the students, about this smart nation. And you're talking about uh, the top 12 trends, plus there was one or two other trends actually, that were quite fascinating, uh, and uh, about how some of them took you some time to sort of fully grasp. And one of the things you mentioned was that privacy was of, of great importance to you. But... Um, I was wondering if you just briefly go through what some of those 12 trends were. I have them here, but presumably they're all in your brain. Well, yeah, sure, I can try to And look, just quickly, remember we have the, the whole trends. video. I'm going to link to that video and embed yeah, it in my story so people can watch it. It's, it's well worth right, watching. Right, so uh, um, in no particular order, uh, one of the trends is Internet of Things. Uh, clearly, it's uh, getting everywhere. All of the things around us become connected. And you mentioned that and started And that also in means the... that they become uh, smart. And you mentioned they started 20 years ago. I mean, it's only yeah, now. It's, really... it's, it's, uh, it's a slow trend, but it's apparently that in five years, we'll have 50 billion devices connected to Internet, which is dramatically more than today. Hmm. The other trend is, uh, for example, wearables. Um, clearly, wearables are growing very fast. Last year, the revenue was around 11.5 billion, driven by Apple Watch. Not so many people wear Apple Watch. Uh, there will be a lot of people wearing those things when they will have some uh, useful sensors. Today, the sensors are relatively simple. Um, another trend but you, is, you, as and you were saying how that would really take off when it helped you to improve your health and live a longer life. Well, the reality is that there is a sort of two parameters which you need to track for every person which are very important. One of them is um, the, person's, uh, uh, the, the, the person's heart. Mm -hmm. uh, you can, of course, just track a pulse, and that would be already good, but you can also track um, the full, blood pressure. Uh, full, full everything related to uh, your heart, blood pressure, electro, cardio, uh, and then the other thing is uh, blood uh, contains. And both of those things can, can be done with very small sensors which can fit into a very small device, which can require very little uh, memory and very little power. And then um, the other trend, which is another slow trend, which is getting everybody's 3D printers. Again, 3D printers are nothing new. Mm -hmm. The issue is that what you can print with them and what is the price of this 3D printer. And, and clearly the 3D printer industry is already large. So there's about $5 billion in 3D printers sold in 2018, that, that's prediction, but there is much more which is which could be done and would be done with 3D printers. And I think in the States we're already seeing prices under 200 bucks, which yeah. is... Then, then you have um, trends which are pretty straightforward, like such as robots, such as drones, such as connected cars. Those are three sort of related uh, trends because effectively we're talking about... Um, uh, autonomous. Autonomous cars, autonomous flying things and autonomous helpers mm -hmm. and um, then we have uh, well-known trends such as uh, big data mm -hmm. and artificial intelligence again they're both related because artificial intelligence is typically needed to deal with big data and to analyze big data on the fly um, clearly uh, this is uh, very important um, um, Next gen computing, we Yeah, so ne ne th th there is a, a trend which are, th these are sort of super trends, I'm just mm -hmm. thinking which uh, high level trends I, I missed, but uh, there, there is super trends such as uh, next generation computing, such as privacy uh, and security, because the fact that the world is becoming digital uh, makes it uh, that it generates much more data, but also makes the data much more valuable. And in many cases, it makes it impossible to operate without data. And so keeping this data private is um, very, very important. You can see that trend in the recent lawsuit, uh, which is making a lot of media stories where FBI is trying to force Apple to give them backdoor. It's kind of funny because I believe this is sort of like NSA already has a backdoor, mm, you, but now right. FBI wants to have a backdoor. Mm -hmm. And I guess they don't give it to FBI, but NSA has it. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it's definitely something which is uh, 
which is a major issue and major concern because in the physical world <coughs> everything is unique and so keeping privacy is relatively simple you just have to uh, hide away but in the digital world you can have as many copies as possible and and so uh, then of course um, uh, all of this trends lead to the fact that there is much more requirement of for computing because if you think about computers at the end of the day computers deal with data and if there's more data generated by the various devices um, and, and uh, various uh, computing things uh, that means there is many more um, computing which is needed and one of the major problems of computing today is that uh, the Moore law which was um, forecasted uh, created by, by uh, founder of uh, Intel Gordon Moore uh, in 1965 has sort of expired. He actually thought of it to be lasting around 50 years. He was very precise mm. about his predictions and um, uh, he uh, also predicted that it will be 50 years and, and we need new computing which is much more power efficient because the modern computing is extremely power efficient. Because uh, you're explaining in the... Yeah, in the I, I don't have the strands in front of me. So Well, you were, you were talking uh, with the... You were talking about chaos uh, neural computing you were talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah, that, that, that all comes into artificial computing uh, um, part. I think you made an interesting uh, point in the conference when you talked about how when you can have infinite digital copies of your data, suddenly that Yeah, well, that's, is, that's, that's again, that's a, uh, uh, that, that's a consequence of all of this, that the world is becoming much more digital yeah. than it is uh, 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 sort of real. And, and I think um, people talk a lot about singularity, and from my standpoint, singularity is when the digital world becomes larger than the physical world. If you think about it, the digital world is, is new. It's, you know, it's very real. In the digital world, people make money, people live, people get married, people meet, people talk, people uh, do a variety of different things, and it becomes part of our professional life for a while, but it's becoming part of our personal lives since, since probably about 10 years ago with social networks and so on. And, and at some point, this digital world becomes more uh, important and larger um, in its complexity and, uh, than, than the physical world. And at and, and that point, um, we have a singularity. But one thing which it means for somebody like us is that there is, um, uh, there is a lot of digital data uh, which needs to be protected, uh, which needs to be stored, which needs to be uh, managed. And, and that's the focus of Acronis, is to create a platform for the digital world, a platform for data, um, which is a uh, pro pro product of the digital world of the future. And so do you have any of your, um, any of the companies you're investing in separately to Acronis that are really focusing on this privacy area to, to brief this? Well, or are you uh, there's a lot of companies areas? which are working on security. Privacy and security are kind of different topics. Yeah. And I am very personally um, um, are convinced that privacy is a part of basic human needs. That's a fundamental right. Uh, fundamental right and basic human need and the world which has no privacy and we're moving rapidly into this world because if everything becomes digital and there is no significant enhancement um, in, in privacy uh, um, of digital world then we become completely unprivate. Everything about what we do everything about um, where we go, everything uh, about us, uh, to the extent of with wearable devices, even our thoughts uh, can be read. Mm. And, uh, you know, that, that's one of the other trends which I mentioned in this is uh, uh, fi financial uh, revolution, mm -hmm. where um, in the past, the banks would um, be the uh, places where you would keep the money but today the money are all digital and with the invention of things like blockchain, you can even have the money without banks mm. and you can even have um, transactions without central authority. And, and uh, yeah, so with, with that, uh, again, you have a need for privacy uh, because all of your financial transactions can be tracked. Yeah, I mean, with banks now offering negative interest rates where you have to pay the banks, some of them in some countries anyway, to hold your money for you, uh, <coughs> the fintech revolution can't come soon enough. And, and the, the need for blockchain and privacy? Well, the reality is that the banks have a lot of information and the question is always how they benefit from this information without infringing into privacy of their uh, users uh, too much. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a huge opportunity. 
the banks are regulated and so in many areas they are limited in what they can do also they are um, you know 600 years old mm. uh, tradition type institutions and, and so there is a lot of new players such as peer-to-peer -to -peer lending such as small business lending such as new generation mobile banks which which don't have anything to do with uh, things like bitcoin mm. but they disrupt the financial industry well at 600 years old it sounds like it's a it's a, an industry ripe for disruption and it's all happening around us so and some industries, even though they are uh, thousands. many thousands of years old, they are not really they're disrupted. Well, that maybe much. not. Maybe they're not, they're, they're not disrupted yet. But their time will come, I guess. I guess. I guess. Now, I notice in a, in a Cronus uh, True Image Cloud, there's a little tick box where you can choose to encrypt your data or not. Uh, given your desire for privacy, uh, will there come a time when that's just automatically encrypted? And, and Definitely, you know, but of course, at privacy. The you make modern privacy is is. Uh, in privacy is very fundamental. I mean, if you think about humans, one of the things which are written in the Bible is about humans um, who actually broken the privacy. So they basically more or less decided to be private. And if you read the very deep religious books, you will see that the belief of the scholars is that there are angels and God who um, are very powerful, but they have to follow the rules. Yeah. And there are humans who have this fundamental right of free choice. And the reason why humans are actually sort of expelled from yeah, heaven, heaven yeah. is because they decided to change eternal life and happiness for the free choice. Mm. So the free choice is as important as life. And you know, without privacy, uh, there is no free choice. And 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 so it's it's a huge topic which. Uh, you know, I, I went off the topic, but the fact of the matter, you can definitely encrypt everything, but at that point, it's very difficult to deal with data if you want to search it mm. uh, and uh, so on. But yeah, it, it might be that at some point we will, um, uh, uh, in, in some point in the near future, we will encrypt every data. At the end of the day, it's very important that the uh, person have to choose himself if he wants to encrypt or not encrypt, uh, which way he wants to encrypt, and. How private he wants to stay uh, that's his data and you know it works both ways I mean one way it works is that uh, he may choose to be completely private but the other way it works he may choose to be completely public mm. um, both have some advantages the privacy itself and free choice here is related to the ability of the person to choose am I public or am I private yeah. and obviously have all the different shades of gray yeah some information gray. it's like sharing part of your calendar publicly and, and, and not and or sharing it, but not disclosing exactly. what it is so, you're just but, using. Uh, so, yeah, exactly. Now, I was, I was interested to see that you had categorized all of those trends in three different areas, and people should watch the video. It's embedded in the with the article. But you talked about how the first category was things like productivity, uh, Internet of Things, robots, drones. The second was making money, fintech and big data. The third was primary instincts, the the uh, things that are of value to human existence, the wearable tech, um, virtual reality, AI, safety and security next-gen computing and how this was something that the students could use to evaluate what they're going to study, what startup they're going to start, what startup well, they're going to join. It is not as much, um, you know, there is a lot of things, humans, uh, most of humans think that they can think and that they actually make thoughtful decisions, but um, that's not exactly right and that's why you have people who will come up with new ideas which will um, be unique to some extent at some point and then it will make them very successful, especially in technology world. Mm -hmm. and, and so some of such ideas would be social networks in the past of different kind, for example. And um, uh, the fact of the matter, when such ideas come to play, it's very difficult to judge if they will be $100 billion ideas, $10 billion ideas, $1 billion ideas. Mm. And one of the uh, ways to judge is that the companies which um, uh, productivity type uh, companies which improve the world in, in a sort of more productive fashion, uh, those are, uh, you know, multi-billion dollar ideas. Um, the companies which make money on money or allow to make money. And, you know, example of the modern world companies which allow to make money uh, is companies like um, uh, uh, from the shared economy. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and that's where you get to add, uh, tens of billions of dollars very rapidly and you get companies like Uber or Airbnb because it's ability to make money uh, uh, in, in some completely new way. So it's a completely new business model of making money on existing assets and extracting money from 
uh, from from sort of uh, thin air. Uh, but there are some ideas which are much more powerful, hmm. and and those are the ideas uh, which deal with basic human instincts. Yeah. And in some way, personal computers, uh, at the time when Steve Jobs uh, participated in creation of this industry, were part of it because personal computers. You know, there was a lot of discussion at that point. Why do people need it? Hmm. And and um, but there is a basic human instinct. People want to be creative, and uh, they enjoy being more creative and enjoy being able to do more. And and that's what driven the evolution of humans over the past, say, million years and especially the last fifty thousand years. And and so computers are very useful in that extent. They they enhance. And and if you move to the forward time, this is ideas like social networks. Uh, again, there, there is a basic human instinct of sharing, uh, there is a basic human instinct of speaking publicly, there is a basic human instinct of uh, making collections like it is with Pinterest. Mm. And, and so those those are hundred billion dollar ideas. And you were talking about, um, uh, well, you're, you're mentioning Pinterest as, as one of those ideas that someone was looking at, but uh, I was just actually, what I was going to say, I've forgotten that. <laughs> <laughs> it, was just, it was in my mind, but it's gone. It doesn't matter. Now, you were talking about how um, you wanted to make uh, Cronus the first s company in Singapore, you know, to be a hundred billion dollar company and to be the leader. You have aggressive goals to be uh, aggressive goals to be this leader in data. And you've got other companies like EMC and NetApp and Western Digital and Seagate. They're all in storage, and but there's no sort of clear leader. There's no clear leader. And, and, without... and the companies which you just named, uh, they're all very good and great companies, and they they are respected in mm -hmm. their own way, but they are not their legacy. So I was, I was their hardware and legacy. What's your and strategy to become the, the clear leader? Without giving well, we have a secrets. lot of different parts of our strategy, and sometimes it's not good to talk about strategy mm. in public. And uh, of and course, our strategy is to make the best uh, products and to satisfy the needs of our partners and customers in the best possible way. But um, the fact of the matter is that in order to make a hundred billion dollar company, the first thing you need is you need to have a large enough market opportunity. And we have it, and you need to have a relatively weak competition, and we have it, and you need to have a strong um, uh, status and play, and uh, finances, and, and the team, and we have it. And so there is opportunity. Now, uh, of course, uh, you cannot really uh, be guaranteed to make a company sure. of that size. I remember at some point I met a guy which is, um, who was a founder of some, well, I won't name the company, but who's the founder of some security company, and, and he told me, I want to make a hundred billion dollars. And at that point, his company was about ten million dollars in revenue, and today is about seventy, which is a great result. And this was, I would think, ten years ago. And I said, How are you going to do that? And he's very easy. Uh, Google people did it, so I can do it. <laughs> <laughs> belief, and, yeah, and, belief. Uh, so, uh, but yeah, uh, unfortunately, he wasn't in the right industry. Mm -hmm. And so, um, even though he he was a very good guy, and he's a very good guy, uh, there was very little chance for him to, to accomplish his goal. In storage, there will be one or two or three hundred billion dollar companies created in the next um, uh, 10 years. And so it's a huge opportunity. Yeah. We will definitely try to be the leader. And we have a lot of things we're doing to be the leader, but uh, there, there is no way you can guarantee to be a leader before you actually complete your task. Sure. Now, one of the things that uh, puts you in a leadership space right now is the offer of unlimited storage with True Image Cloud, and you probably are well aware that Microsoft reneged on their offer of unlimited storage with their Office 365 offering. They said that they had people uploading uh, 75 terabytes of personal DVR collections, and so they just they shut it down, they're only offering a terabyte. I have to tell you that, um, you know, that sounds good, but we are also thinking about things like this, because, uh, you know, data is a funny thing, and, and the funny thing about data is that if you think about any species like cockroaches or like uh, uh, bacteria or like uh, you know human beings they can multiply at, at, at very fast but uh, yeah. not not that fast yeah. you know uh, it's it, there is a limit mm. with this data you can copy it and so expanding data to an unre unreasonable size it's very very cheap and so you can easily uh, create uh, exabytes of data if you want, you can create exabytes of data yourself. Mm. And, and, and so um, that, that's a kind of one of the features of the digital world is that you can expand the data unlimited, to unlimited extent. Well, so I think, I think that over time, 
uh, almost every player will have limitations to their unlimited offers. Sure. But not yet, yet with the crisis, still not still yet. Still on the um, so I was then also going to ask you, you told the students that Singapore is a vastly more advanced place than it was when you first arrived uh, over a couple of decades ago, and that they, these students at this university, could make it in, in Singapore, they don't have to leave. And so I was uh, to, you know, to make it somewhere else, as may have once been the case. So I was going to ask, could you say the same for students of most other Western or technologically advanced societies in the US, Europe and Australia, or is the Asia Pacific's continued growth and the so-called Asia Pacific century yeah, we're living, a clarion call to the world's youth to come to Asia to make their ideas into next gen realities here, when we're in Singapore here? Or do you think you know someone in Australia can do it just as I well? have started my speech and I would love to have your listeners and viewers to look at my speech and give me comments from saying that I'm not a futurologist, I'm not a politician, I'm not an economist. So what I can say is that there is a, a general tendency of people when they judge a place, like you know, just before this interview, I was talking to a potential candidate to be uh, one of the leaders of our research and development center. They judge about the place in static. And, and so they judge about how the place is right now mm -hmm. at this point of time. And that's just wrong because people don't ever live in this moment, they live over the next 20 years, mm -hmm. um, and 10 years, five years in a place. And uh, Singapore is good right now, and it's rapidly improving. If you look at the universities, if you look at the uh, venture community, if you look at technology companies, uh, is it much behind, for example, Israel? Of course it is. Today it is much behind. Is it um, uh, moving at a very rapid speed forward? Yes. It's moving much faster ahead from the standpoint of uh, uh, relative progress than, than almost any place. So it, it, Singapore is a good place, but Singapore is very unique. So you cannot just um, uh, compare it to any country in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and you know, good or bad, uh, it's very unique. And so in general, uh, I don't think it works for every country, Western or Asia Pacific. Uh, there are some countries which are somewhat similar, but not really that like Singapore. Now I was reading uh, in a website called Futurist Tech about a looked like a 20 cent or 50 cent coin, I mean sort of a large, larger coin. It was a piece of glass and they call it a 5D nan nano structured glass that could hold 360 terabytes of data and last for billions of years and uh, it was created by the uh, University of Southampton. Yeah, I know the professor. I've actually just spoken to him yesterday. Wow, well there you to go. To that particular professor, Mr. Kazansky. He's actually originally from Russia. Okay. And uh, <laughs> yes, he, he is, uh, we are contemplating for him to um, show it to semiconductor industry, yes. Sure. So. Well, I mean, I was, you know, given we, we have these advancements, I mean, this, they were talking about how it's a 360 terabyte disk, thermal stability up to a thousand degrees, virtually unlimited lifetime at room temperature, 13.8 billion years at 190 degrees, pretty impressive stuff. So uh, clearly you've heard of it, but I mean, what other kinds of future storage devices do you see foresee solving humanity's ever-growing storage needs? I know we spoke of things like holographic storage in our previous interview, but what, what else have you heard besides this amazing advance? Well, there is a lot of things. I mean, at the end of the day, you should think about uh, how to put, uh, uh, say, an, um, uh, I don't know, 1,000 exabytes of data into one uh, cubic uh, centimeter uh, and, and keep it for uh, one billion years, and well, maybe ten billion years. It's a lifetime of the universe, and send it uh, to uh, one hundred million light ways away. Uh, so today, there is no technology which is even close. Now, it is very important because the best way to transfer things and the best way to compress things is to compress them in digital data. Uh, you know, it's a philosophical question whether the world is fundamentally digitizable. And, and it does look like it's not because there is some quantum qualities of the world, uh, but there is also quantum storage, which is more interesting where you can store quantum states. And, and that potentially means that anything can be stored. And, and if you can store anything for a long enough time, uh, well, that really changes everything in the world. You could store yourself and then Maybe. bring yourself back in Maybe. the future. Talk, you maybe can... store yourself, that would require an understanding of what is yourself. And sure. at the moment, there is no such understanding. But to store your copy, yes, so we can restore you, it will talk exactly the same way and behave the same way. But it wouldn't be you, 
or rather it, it, it will uh, think it's you, but mm. uh, you will not really know it's you in the future. So <laughs> complicated. It is. Well, because in theory, you'll be six feet under, except you'll be there as your digital copy thinking it's you. Any hints you can tell us about the, the, the upcoming versions of Acronis for this year? Or is it all no, we, we have too? a lot of different things which are coming up this year. We are actually about to release a new product which we call a launch pad or step towards our new products. Uh, over the next 12 months, we will completely replace all of our product with new architecture which is designed for much different scalability, safety, privacy, uh, dealing with uh, you know million times more data than, than our prior products. And we were developing this over the past three years, so lots of products. And, and there is not any specific product which I would want to highlight today because sure. uh, that would be part of our launch launches yeah, over the next uh, 12 months. Now two questions which are sort of interesting. One is, is there anything else you'd like to tell us before any final comments that I haven't asked you about or that the audience should know about? And, and secondly, you know, what's the most interesting question that you've ever been asked that you can that, that sort of stuck with you? You thought, wow, that was such an insightful question. Or, okay. I'm not sure about most interesting question. I think most interesting question which humans have to ask themselves, and, and we are coming very rapidly to this uh, state, is what is human creativity and what is free choice? And it's interesting that there is no creativity without free choice. And, uh, and the, you know, this uh, relationship between different features of humans, you know, we grow to believe that they are unimportant, right? So we grow to believe um, in, in first in, in the past, uh, you know, in a thousand years ago, people believed that uh, religion is important, that God is important. And over the past hundred years, they slowly moved towards, uh, though there is science, there are material things, mm -hmm. and there are some stupid human sense like um, emotions and creativity and free choice uh, and apparently those things are um, actually very real and and the fact of the matter today there is not really any understanding on how to digitize them mm -hmm. so the only non-digitizable or the most non-digitizable is what are related to humans and that's the most interesting question is how the humans are organized and, um, but uh, about the most interesting question, I'm not sure, from, from the audience, if sure. that's a question. And uh, do you have any, any final messages you'd like to leave with the, the viewers today about life, the universe, the chronos and everything? No, I think uh, it's, it's, um, it's interesting, but people don't realize how much of their life is digital today. And, and uh, people behave in regards to their life very much uh, driven by how schools are teaching them and how their parents behave and how their grandparents behave and how their grand grandparents behave. But in reality, behavior of their parents uh, is not very relevant. People who are 30 to 50 years old right now, their parents were born before digital world. Mm -hmm. in and, and so they, uh, even those guys, uh, slightly older, they, they, they are digitized a lot, but the habits, the fundamental habits come from the world which is not digital. And so they keep, um, uh, you know, physical artifacts uh, as part of their memories. And, but, but reality is that today, everything about your life, uh, everything about you is as uh, digits, bytes and bits. And uh, thinking about uh, safety of those bits, uh, uh, security of those bits and privacy is becoming very important. And yes, um, there is very few people in the world uh, who are um, experiencing real problems with it. There is more and more every day, and you haven't yet, but, and there is many more people in the world who are experiencing problems with their teeth. And so they take care of their teeth, they go to a dentist all the time, mm -hmm. because they know that if they don't, that it's painful and it's not productive. But they don't think this way about data. Uh, over the next uh, 10 to 30 years, um, data will become much more important than even human teeth. And so thinking about your life in terms of your data uh, kind of makes sense for people and definitely makes sense for businesses. I'm not sure we'll ever have digital dentures, but, that's, that's we, a, might. but we might. <laughs> but you never know. Well, look, I very much look forward to uh, the new products from Acronis this year and your future speeches. I recommend everybody watch the, the one that I have embedded in the, with this video. Uh, from the National uh, University in Singapore and uh, thank you very much. You're welcome.